This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's back in yet another generation. This is Lenovo's ThinkPad X260. We have reviewed the X240, the X250, and predecessors. It's the evolution of the series, as you might guess, with the latest generation Intel Skylake CPUs. It's a 12 and a half inch Ultrabook dual core CPUs, nice small footprint here not the skinniest guy on the block but what sets it apart from a lot of the business competition these days particularly the hp leapbook folio and dell's lovely latitude 13 7000 series is it has full intel core i3 i5 and i7 cpus rather than intel core m so it's more powerful it has a lot of ports folks for something this small that's always been the the kind of uh, raison d'etre of the x2 XX series, the 200 series laptop. So just about everything you want is here except for Thunderbolt 3 USB-C. Sorry, that's not here, but given the, the wealth of additional ports here, it's probably not going to be that much of a big deal. You're not going to be plugging in a Razer core and gaming with this. That's not what it's about. The other thing that sets it apart, apart is still here. This has the power bridge battery system. There's an internal battery in this, and then there's this removable battery. So you can have it with the small battery. You can have it with the thicker battery and get even longer run times. That's pretty neat, again, especially for the target business market because long battery life working out in the field is important. And then you throw in a couple of bright matte displays and you've got something that really is ready for the road. We're going to look at it now. This is a laptop with pretty traditional and largely unchanged architecture from previous generations. You have a two and a half inch drive bay SATA 3 interface. You can get that with a spinning HDD at the very low end or SSDs at the higher end up to 512 gig capacity. Price starts at around $765. That gets you a core i3, four gigs of RAM and a 500 gig spinning hard drive and the lower end 1366 by 768 TN panel. Blah, not a nice panel. We'll talk about that later. As configured for our Core i5 with the 1080p panel, a 256 gig SSD and 8 gigs of RAM, it's around $1,160, depending on which Core i5 you want. You can get the i6200U or the i6300U. There's about $50 that sets those two apart. So, you, you know, not too bad a price for a business Ultrabook here. RAM, you actually have a RAM socket. That's refreshing and unusual in an Ultrabook, but there is only one RAM socket. So 16 gigs is max anyway. So does that give an advantage over an Ultrabook that you could buy with 16 gigs soldered on? Not so much, but still, it's there. Usual socketed Intel 8260 AC Wi-Fi card with Bluetooth is on board as well. And Lenovo is surprisingly loud and full speakers. They really, on the ThinkPads, have been doing a good job with something they can fill a room with sound to the point where whoever you live with is probably going to say, hey, tone it down a little bit. You know, there's not a lot of direct competition for this particular model, a 12.5 inches in a compact Ultrabook. The Dell Latitude 13 7000 series, beautiful looking laptop, but that's an Intel Core M, so it's less powerful, fewer ports as well. And the same thing with the HP EliteBook Folio, thin and light, really nice looking, but still Intel Core M and fewer ports, and neither of those has the bridge battery system. So direct competitors, not so much. You're going to have to look up to something like the Dell XPS 13, to really get where we are here with the processors. Ports, to a certain extent, Dell is cutting back on ports now that they've added Thunderbolt 3 to the XPS line, but you get the idea here. So performance, well, it's pretty much what you would expect for a dual core 15 watt Ultrabook here. That's actually a little better than average result, 3263 for our PC Mark 8 score. And that's interesting, just a SATA 3 SSD, not the faster PCIe NVMe kind that can really boost scores. So it's doing quite well in benchmarks here. And this is going to be about 25% faster, 20% faster than an Intel Core M system from some competitors. For W Prime, it computed Pi in 16.5 seconds, a, a typical solid score. Actually, it's a little bit better than average for a Core i5. It's more like what I usually see for a Core i7. And for Geekbench 3, 3,000 on the single core score and 6325 on the multi-core score, which is, again, par for the course, and it's going to be faster than, again, something like the Dell Latitude 13, and it's going to be about as fast as a similarly equipped Dell XPS 13, except in the storage subsystem because the XPS does have a faster PCIe SSD. But in actual use, launching programs, doing things, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Unless you're doing something that's very disk I.O. intensive here, writing a whole lot of database files, installing software, copying lots of files back and forth, you won't be able to tell the difference. 
So the display, we have the 1920 by 1080 matte IPS display. That's the highest end option you can get. No QHD here, no gloss, no touch, no pen support. If you want pen support, you go for one of those ThinkPad Yoga models that supports the pen, supports touch. Yeah, you can flatten it out. You can do this. This is as far as it goes. And I can't see a reason for it to do any more than that because, well, it's meant to be used as a conventional laptop, not as a convertible. It's not a convertible. The display quality on this, the good news is the brightness is really good. Lenovo claims 300 nits. We're actually measuring 330 nits. That combined with the matte display, there's like no reflections as I'm doing this with it. Just about, I mean, it's pretty amazing. Black levels are pretty good at 0 0.50 at max brightness. So you get an ultimate contrast ratio of 660 to one. That's pretty good. And certainly for a business use laptop where you're gonna be looking at text more than graphics and all that sort of thing, it works well. This is not the display for those of you who are graphics professionals or photographers. Uh, this is a photo that I took myself and I can see a whole lot of color loss and color kind of blobbing, how else would you describe it, around some of the cloud areas where there should be more color showing up and more of a gradation. It's pretty enough to look at it for your everyday kind of, you know, use, like I said. But if you're a photographer and you're going to be picky about it, that's something to keep in mind. The white point, hardware white point, is 7,600 degrees Kelvin. That's way too high. 6,600 is ideal. Most laptops are around... 7,000 or so, but calibration really helps with this. It calibrates up really nicely. Now, the other models, uh, you can get this also, by the way, IPS viewing angles are pretty good. You can get this with a base 1366 by 768 panel. That's okay. For a screen this small, I have no qualms with that resolution, but the thing is that the base model is a TN panel. So those are the ones that have don't have good viewing angles. You're going to be tilting it forward. You're going to be tilting it back to try to find the sweet spot for brightness and contrast. You don't want that one. That's the one that's there for businesses who buy these in bulk for their workers. And as long as you can see something on the screen, your company's happy about that. There is a step up 1366 by 768 panel that is is IPS so you will get these viewing angles and you'll get that 300 nits of brightness whereas the TN panel is only 200 nits really not bright so there is that middling option there as well the only problem with Lenovo's website at least here in the US is it's very hard to tell when you're looking at the different configurations for sale which one you're going to get if it's the TN or the IPS 768p resolution display if you can afford it, just go for the 1080p with this. So that, that's my advice. This is a pretty nice display other than the color gamut being eh. And here's one of the upsides of it not being one of those insanely thin laptops. You get a really wonderful keyboard. Now we expect really wonderful keyboards from Lenovo. The ThinkPad keyboards, they're excellent. You got the smile shaped keys, they're concave, so there's a little indentation so you can really home your fingers in, but key travel is pretty good here. 1.6 millimeters, nice and crisp and damped at the same time. It's just lovely stuff to use. And backlit, of course, FN plus spacebar turns on your backlighting. And you can see the key relief here. It, it's good stuff. FN row by default controls multimedia, means brightness and volume and all that sort of thing. If you're a typist, this is a nice machine. The trackpad likewise is good. And of course, we have the track pointer, racer stick pointer here with dedicated hardware buttons above the trackpad. Synaptics trackpad with Lenovo's very configurable settings for controlling the trackpad. Also very good. So thumbs up twice over for keyboard and trackpad and there's the fingerprint scanner right over here the slick kind you run your finger across for biometric security so like I said port selection is the strong point of the x260 and you get plenty of these despite the small size unlike many ultrabooks you got Lenovo square charging connector right over there you have both HDMI and mini display port two USB 3.0 ports over here optional smart card reader slot is there and on this side, you got your combo mic headphone jack, a third USB 3.0 port. We have an SD card slot, and that's the slot for the optional 4G LTE, or WAN, as Lenovo refers to it. Again, not a real common feature, but something we still see on business laptops. Uh, if you do decide on getting a laptop without it built in, you could always use your phone as a hotspot, a MiFi, all those sort of things. But for a lot of business users on the go, it's much easier to just have it built in. And actual RJ5 ETH. 45 Ethernet right there, so that's pretty nice. And that's our lock slot over there. But wait, there's more on the underside. On the bottom, we have the traditional docking connector, the old-style docking connector there. So for legacy 
settings companies that have a lot of Lenovo docking stations, you can just drop this into your existing docking station. So it's well equipped, thus not having USB-C Thunderbolt 3 isn't much of a hardship because usually that's pretty handy for making up for a lack of ports, missing Ethernet, missing DisplayPort, that sort of thing. All right, so to open this up, it's not too hard. You just take your small Phillips head screwdriver. Yes, this is actually a mini Craftsman, but you can get any small electronic screwdriver. Unscrew the visible screws. There's nothing hidden there. Remove the battery. Two latches to remove it. Another finger to push it out. You've got to have nimble fingers to do that, but no big deal. And then you pry the plastic clips. The front one, one of the front ones was pretty grippy, but well, underside, there it is. And here are our internals. Two and a half inch drive bay. There is not an M2 SSD drive bay in this. We have the socketed wireless card, Intel 8260, as per normal. This is for, see the little wires here? This is for the optional LTE module. That is an M2 slot. I don't know if the BIOS would support you putting a half height SSD in there or not, though. Battery, obviously here, this is the internal battery, so if you actually did need to replace it at some point, you can now access it. Just unscrew it and you can take it out. And the single RAM slot, which we have an 8 gig DDR4 RAM module here, 16 gigs is the biggest module you can get, so therefore 16 gigs is maximum on this, and clearly not dual channel because you only have one RAM slot. With Lenovo's bridge battery system, you can actually remove this battery without powering down the laptop, though that might take some, you know, coordination challenges there because it's easier to close the laptop to do this, isn't it? But you can just close it. You don't have to say shut down, that sort of thing, because there's an internal 23.2 watt hour battery that's always powering it. And the secondary battery, you can get it with the skinnier battery, which is an additional 23 watt hour. So you got a total of just under 50 watt hour, which is typical for an Ultrabook. Or you can get the bigger, beefier 72 watt hour battery. So you've got almost 100 watt hours of battery, which is a lot more than the average Ultrabook for runtime. So versatility, Definitely, in terms of what you can do with it. So, it takes a little bit of a challenge to un unlatch both of these and push the battery out, but that's what you do. So there's the skinny battery, very small, very light, and we put the beefier battery in, it becomes a kind of stand which improves the typing angle, so it's, it's actually not so bad to use. You put that in here, and there's what it looks like. Sticks up on the back, sticks up on the side. And it gives it kind of like a little racing stance. See, it tilts towards the front now if you're looking at it like that. So what does that mean in terms of battery life? Well, <laughs> it's going to be good. With the smaller battery in place, we average about six and a half hours, which is not unusual for an Ultrabook for, with a core i5 CPU and a 1080p display. When we put in that bigger battery, we would manage 10 hours of battery life, which is well and above pretty much any Windows laptop on the market that's going to have Intel Core I level performance on it. So very, very nice there. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad X260. It's a traditional laptop. It does not yoga. It does not do pens. It does not even do touch, but it works perfectly well as a traditional laptop, a very portable one with a very small footprint. Again, not super duper thin, not super duper sexy, unless you're a ThinkPad person and you love that kind of matte black rectangle look, but lots of battery stamina. The, the swappable batteries is really handy for those of you who do use this on the go and on the road. Good matte displays. You can see them outside, particularly if you go for the more expensive ones. The base this option is still, as always, with Lenovo. Yeah. And you even have the traditional docking connector here. So it's a real solid machine. It's very durable. Lovely keyboard. If you're in the market for an Ultrabook that has a small footprint and a good amount of power and lots of connectivity inside, it's well worth consideration. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.